friends, it's Ellie from Russia and this morning I'm going to meet another YouTuber. He's an American who lives here in Moscow and he even builds a house in Russia. So I'm going to ask him about buying property in Russia, how he got a Russian citizenship and about differences in the cultures of the US and Russia. According to the United Nations, Russia is one of the 10 countries with the highest foreign-born immigrant populations. Russian citizenship is one of the most underrated passports globally, and recently it has become more straightforward to obtain. According to the 2021 Henley Passport Index, which ranks every passport of the world each year, Russia is number 51 out of 116. Having a Russian passport gives access to 119 countries around the globe, visa-free or visa on arrival. I will talk to Tim, an American living in Russia, about his Russian citizenship and his expat life here. Expat life is always so exciting, so let's hear his story. Oh, and here he is. Hi, Tim! Oh, hello! <laughs> so nice to meet oh, you! Very nice to meet you! <laughs> How do you like this summer in Moscow? Uh, I don't know, it's been too hot for me. This is more my weather. The sky's gray, uh, I'm feeling good. Yeah, let's go for a walk All right. in the Alexander Garden. Okay. So, Tim, I have so <laughs> many questions to you. Well, that's good. Because the US is a country number one for Russians to immigrate. And yeah. You probably know that many Russians have this dream to study or to move to the US and you yeah. the opposite. Uh, so well, you yeah. Why? Uh, why? Uh, no, well, because uh, I grew up in uh, Cleveland, right? And uh, so I sort of saw the uh, other side of America throughout most of my childhood. And uh, when I reached uh, about, oh, I don't know, you know, after college and all that was over, uh, you sort of see that you're living paycheck to paycheck. You have absolutely nothing going on in life uh, with no yeah, hopes and no Russians prospects. Also live Paycheck by paycheck. Well, uh, I'll put this way. There's another factor. Uh, all my ancestors came from here, uh, so I decided to go back to the motherland, and uh, that was uh, that was it. Uh, another thing that uh, Russians always say is, well, why didn't you then live in a different place in America? Well, I'm from a black neighborhood. Uh, almost everyone was black except for me, and so I also grew up in a bit of a different culture. And white America is about. Uh, uh, in some ways, it's as alien as uh, any other society. So I thought I'd. Uh, mm -hmm. try to go back to the uh, Slavic motherland and I uh, don't have any regrets. Nice. You know, I mm -hmm. received so many comments and DMs oh. like, I want to move to Russian countryside yeah. and find babushka or comments like, I would like to find some property yeah. on the far east of Russia and move to Siberia. and. I wonder why? Is it a new American trend or what? <laughs> well, with, with the United States, uh, there's a lot of pressure, uh, especially from the government. You know, the United States was, uh, even maybe 50 years ago, 60, 70 years ago, was a country where the government was supposed to leave you alone. And now that is over. The government and uh, the media are very much in your lives and you, uh, I'll put it this way, uh, we're all deep in the system. And uh, there's a certain romanticism for the, you know, the wild, wild west, for big open spaces, yeah. for the freedom of uh, not having anyone mess with you. And if you do move out to Siberia, to the middle of nowhere in Russia, no one will mess with you. You will be the master of your domain and you'll have really nothing to, to worry about in the uh, sense of government or society uh, getting in your way. Uh, but it's definitely a tough life. You know, it's not easy, especially in Russia, living off the grid, as they call it, is uh, it's rough, but it's possible. Now, why you'd want to live with a babushka, that's some sort of weird romanticism that I can, can't understand. Uh, I was a Peace Corps volunteer, and I lived with a, a woman who was a widow. You know, her husband died, yes. right? Uh, she had adult children who left. Uh, so, not babushka, but soon to be babushka, right? And it was uh, very stressful because uh, she was very much raised in the Soviet system. and was very used to these uh, sort of Soviet ways of doing things, mm -hmm. and I was not. And so, to be honest, in a lot of ways, it was harder to integrate uh, sort of being in a pressure cooker rather than going to the country, sort of living by yourself and sort of easing into the integration. So uh, it, it had its pluses and minuses. She was nice, she was very well-meaning, but uh, I'll put it this way, uh, people who grew up in the Soviet system who are becoming less and less every day, uh, you know, so if you're young watching this, you're probably not gonna be dating a girl who has the Soviet mentality, but in the yeah. Soviet Union, they were very much focused on making people who would correct the behavior of other people. Mm. That was a very important thing. And uh, that- so saying, 
how and what you have to do. Yes, okay. yes, basically that, uh, you know, you need to do this, you need to take off your shoes, or uh, what was hard for me, you need to change clothes every time you come home. In Russia, you have to change yeah. clothes. Uh, that takes time to yeah. get used to, but having someone just sort of constantly on your case about it, but that's the kind of person the Soviet Union wanted, and that's kind of the type of person that uh, remains from that. So you also build a house in Russia, right? That's correct. Well, I re remodeled one. Uh, I had a million rubles burning in my pocket and the fear of uh, eventually being thrown out of my rental apartment. You know, I have kids. Uh, so it's very scary to be renting with nowhere to go, uh, you know, whatsoever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I uh, had a million rubles more, a little more, and uh, that's what I blew it on. I got a big bag of cash and uh, bought a really, really beat up, dingy house and started to fix it. Nearby Moscow, right? Uh, yeah, it's in Chekhov. Chekhov is a little city to the south of Moscow. And on my channel, RTTT, if you look for it, RTTT, this old Russian house, uh, whichever search term you use, you'll see how I fixed up that house uh, over the process of, I think, 17 episodes or something. So, yeah, uh, you should check out <laughs> his channel because he travels in Russia a lot so many yeah. travel vlogs he travels a lot more than Russians <laughs> oh, yeah yeah places. and actually that can be very interesting because usually Russians argue with me as if they know everything when they generally don't know anything <laughs> uh, I'll tell you one thing uh, for you foreigners most Russian people do not know most of their own laws especially when it comes to two things immigration and guns uh, so whenever you get into a conversation with most Russian people about immigration laws or guns uh, you always just want to just cry you just want to uh, lay down and curl into a ball and cry because no one knows anything they think they do but they really don't uh, that's number one <laughs> and uh, number two uh, everyone has these ideas about what the rest of Russia is like and uh, I've seen it they haven't so yeah exactly actually Russians don't travel that much they prefer to go to countries like Turkey Egypt yeah somewhere just well I understand uh, they some warm place where you can lay by a beach yeah uh, well, to an extent, I can understand that because you want to try something different. Like, you know, the very first time I really got to travel on my own was I went to go visit some of my uh, extended family in Poland, right, uh, to sort of uh, try out what Eastern Europe was like. And in fact, going to Poland is one of the reasons I'm here now because I really liked it. Uh, but, you know, what's more interesting, going to a completely different place or going from Ohio to Illinois? Mm. or Michigan. Yeah. It's exactly. the exact same thing, you yeah, know? Exactly. And I think that's what happens with Russia. It's like, well, where could I take a vacation to? Well, Egypt's different and it's warm. Uh, the big difference is, is I, uh, unlike everyone in Russia, Russians love Moria and Solnce, right? So that's their two things. They love the sea and the sunshine. I don't like either. Uh, I like land and I like the gray skies like we have today. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And back to the conversation about property. Yeah. What did you have to do with the documents in order to buy property in Russia? Well, nothing really, because by that time I already had citizenship, so I bought it as a Russian person, so it really wasn't a big deal. Uh, ironically, uh, for Americans out there, uh, actually the bureau, like the real estate bureau that I used was a division of Century, Century 21. So they actually had like the Century 21 sign, which is cute, uh, very American. Uh, but I mean, it wasn't too hard. Uh, okay, but yeah. how did you get a citizenship? Uh, well, <laughs> I know people. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's kind of how I got some uh, help from uh, some certain individuals who chose to back me, and we uh, filed a uh, request to the, to the administration of the president of the Russian Federation uh, because at the time you couldn't have dual citizenship. Now you can. So in the past, if you were a Western person, you had to sacrifice your previous citizenship to get a Russian citizenship. Well, thankfully they got rid of that. Uh, but I'm one of the people who had to get around that rule by getting their uh, citizenship approved by the president of Russia his, and his administration. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I kind of went to end around on that. But before that, I did do the whole uh, residency permit green card thing twice. So trust me, I've been through the whole bureaucratic nightmare with immigration three times before that. Oh so uh, I know I know what it's all about and what it's all, you know, I know yeah, the deal. It's hard. Yeah. If you don't know the right people as Tim does though, here is some information about obtaining the Russian citizenship. Foreign nationals can apply for Russian permanent residency after living in Russia for one year. It is valid for five years and it can be extended an unlimited number of times. And you can apply for Russian citizenship after five years of permanent residence in Russia. You can also do it sooner if you meet certain criteria. Currently, Russia is facing a demographic crisis, and the government seems to be addressing this problem by attracting foreigners to Russia to live and work. 
The last change came in early 2020, when the Russian government removed the requirement to renounce your existing citizenship to become a Russian citizen. Before this change, many expats may have wanted Russian citizenship, but their need to abandon their current citizenship was a severe barrier. Now you can have a dual citizenship. And yes, you must pass a Russian language test to apply for Russian citizenship. Depending on the route you take, you also may have to take exams on the Russian language, history and law. There is a playlist on my channel where I teach daily phrases for conversations in Russian and a Russian-speaking club that I organize, where you can learn Russian and practice your speaking skills in our online sessions. Tongue touching the cheese. Try to talk, to talk now e and feel it. E. 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 Yeah, you feel that uh, ta the tongue... Ta I will leave the links to the playlist and to the club in the description. I will be happy to see any of you guys in our lessons. So, I would like to compare different cultural and life aspects in the US versus in yeah. Russia, because often these countries are opposed to each other. Yeah. Everyone knows what the American dream is, that you uh, can get into the higher social class with your talent and uh. all this stuff. And what do you think a Russian dream is? Well, the problem is the American dream is very much up for debate and it's really been mutated, especially by the immigrants who came. Because what the American dream was, was it was a system that uh, would allow you, no matter who you are, uh, to have an opportunity uh, to succeed and for the yeah. government to get off your back so you can do what you want and kind of live how you want and uh, do that whole pursuit of happiness thing that they talk about in uh, the Declaration of Independence, right? That was the idea. That's gone. Well, when foreign people come to America, the American dream is stuff. It's the house, it's the car, it's become material. So in a lot of ways, the American dream has become completely mutated from anything of value, which is a shame. Uh, maybe one day they'll fix it, but I don't think they will. It's just gonna keep going. Uh, it's gonna keep going the way it's going. What do you so, think so. a typical Russian person dreams about? Stuff. <laughs> also stuff. Materialism, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, because Russians, uh, I've maybe only once or twice met Russians who like America because of Thomas Jefferson or something philosophical. Mm. They want the big house, they want the car. That's all they care about. Okay, so the thing is about how Russians relate to America. Generally, they sort of interact with America like a very horny guy does with a woman uh, with big breasts at a bar. He sees those big boobs and he's like, I want that. He doesn't care about who she is, what she thinks. Uh, he doesn't care about marrying her and building a life. He's just like, these tits are awesome and that's what I want. And that's kind of how Russians are with America. They just want the material stuff. They just want the tits. They don't care about anything else. Uh, and so in a lot of ways, to be honest, uh, <laughs> knowing that uh, if I were President Trump, I would really limit uh, immigration to America from Russia because you're not really getting people who believe in American ideals coming. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what he did, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, good, uh, to an extent, but that was for, for different reasons, not, not so much that. Uh, he did really restrict certain Muslim countries from coming, but I don't know, that's a little bit of a different yeah, so thing. So strive for material success. In Russia, people... No, 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 so, no, 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 success requires work and achieving something. Russians want handouts. Yeah. <laughs> Russians, especially, I would say more Russians really like the European model. Go to some country, have the government give you stuff. You know what I mean? That's more, I think, in line with it. Uh, I don't hear many Russians saying, well, I'm going to go to America and I'm going to work as hard as like, no, they're just like, but there's big houses, there's free stuff. <laughs> because, you know, there's the whatever, pasobie, gos pasobie, mm -hmm. that word of like basically government handouts. That's what the Russians want when they go to America is the handouts. So. Yeah, we have actually many fairy tales Yeah. where, for example, Vanya Durak, who is, who is this Vanya character yeah. and he does nothing and he gets rich and we have many fairy tales, so it's like a dream yeah, yeah. in some way. Well, and for poor people the world over, that's uh, very much a dream. I mean, in America, what do we have? Uh, you, uh, win, you know, winning the lottery is one of the dreams of how anyone could get rich or you break your leg at some uh, in front of Microsoft's. Uh, headquarters and you get to sue Microsoft for millions of dollars. So yeah. Yeah, I would agree that it might be a Russian dream to do nothing and yeah. to get free stuff yeah. and to get lucky, all this stuff. So Russians feel this desperation that their hard work wouldn't be paid off fairly enough by the government. So yeah. they would like to overcome it and maybe cheat the government. But in the US, I think people think that the government is going to help them 
right? Oh. Do you mean Americans? Yes. Well, traditionally, no. Traditionally, you're supposed to help yourself. Uh, we're a society where we're a capitalist society where you're supposed to work and do things for yourself. I mean, listen to the way Republicans talk. Uh, they, they're not supposed to. This whole thing of the government helping you is more of a 1930s uh, left wing uh, sort of perspective on life, you know? So. Have you ever thought about, for example, opening business? Do you think it's mm -hmm. easier to be an entrepreneur in the US or in Russia? Well, that really depends. So if I had the choice of hiring people, would I hire Russians or Americans? Generally, I would hire Americans. Although the whole millennial generation has sort of changed things, they behave differently. So it's kind of hard to say. I haven't had that much experience with uh, dealing with American millennials, but people my age or older as Americans just work 10 times harder. Uh, you know, if you, have a, if you pay an American to do something, you're paying more, but they will work to death mm. for no reason. They will, the reason is they're Protestants. That's the underlying mot motivation. But Protestants uh, and uh, people <laughs> who, who uh, are from countries where Confucius had a lot of influence are very happy to work to death. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, but then again, when you want to get into taxation, the Russian system is much more generous than America or the West in general. Yeah, of course. In yeah. America, it's 30%, right? Uh, it depends. But you're talking about individual taxes versus corporate taxes. But in, in Russia, like, you know, if you do your samazanyatas naselenia, you're being self-employed, it's what, 4%? Uh, yes. <laughs> that's yes. it. You know what I mean? So yeah, the taxes and are just easier to deal with. They're lower. You may not even need an accountant uh, to do with it. Even with my YouTube channel, yeah. if it was based in the US, I would pay 30%, yeah. but I pay the taxes in Russia. So yeah. for the US, I pay zero and for Russia, 4%, yeah. just because my channel is based in Russia. Yeah, exactly. So when you can deal with the taxation, things are a lot easier here. And also things are a lot easier here with just dealing with people and... Uh, uh, there's no real censorship. There's no political correctness. So in a lot of ways, you have a well, you'll never get sued ever. We were hungry, so we've decided to have late breakfast at Terimok, which is a fast food restaurant of Russia where you can have traditional Russian food like blinis, which are pancakes with different stuffing. Tim took, what did you choose? Uh, soup. Got the soup, and we've got the uh, blin with the ham and cheese, the true classic. Tim, how do you like the Russian food overall? Well, I like it because I'm used to it. Uh, I'll put it this way, buckwheat and gas water, as it's called, was uh, very hard to get used to when I first came here, but uh, over time, you fall in love with it. What do you like the most? What Russian dishes? Um, a lot of salads. Like the Olivier, um, the supposedly Salat Cesar, but that's from Mexico, but it's from here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a lot of ways, you have it at every restaurant, I don't know. Soup. I love soup. As uh, you can see right here, we're having some nice uh, fish soup. Mm -hmm. So, what foods from the U.S. do you miss the most? Yellow mustard. That you can't uh, find in Russia. It's very hard to find yellow mustard, like French's yellow mustard, the mustard that's so brutally yellow. It's like more yellow than the sun. Uh, that Have kind you tried I really the like. Russian mustard? It's so. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's intense. Uh, I forget. Um, I believe that's called stadium mustard, uh, where I'm from. Uh, it's it's real. Makes your eyes kind of uh, tear up a little yes. bit, but yeah. So that's one thing where Russians are known for not having spicy food, but food that's like really intense, like mustard, horseradish, uh, really piercing. Those kind of uh, I don't know what you call call them sour, I guess maybe foods uh, are actually part of the Russian diet. So there are some things with intense flavors in Russian cuisine, just not spicy. Spicy is uh, foreign. So. And what do you think about Russian salads like Olivier or herring under a fur, the coat. fur coat? Yeah. Because well, for herring. Americans, it might be strange that we have these beets and fish and potatoes and eggs and oh. carrots and onion and all together. Yeah. Well, herring under a fur coat is proof of when you go from being an expat to being an immigrant, okay? <laughs> because once you start to like the way that tastes, that means your taste as an American have changed because you have essentially uncooked fish and then what is it, the layer of, you know, like onions, 
uh, shredded eggs, shredded beets with mayonnaise in between yeah. the different layers. It sounds so disgusting to Tim who is 20 years old, but Tim who's 40 years old will eat that any day of the week. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm the one so, at, yeah. I'm the one at home who's responsible for making salads, so it's usually my job to do Olivier or a salad patchouli, the fur coat one. Yeah, and uh, yeah. make all of those salads to celebrate the new year. Yeah, yeah. On New Year's, I guess uh, um, my British friends tell me that, uh, you know, Americans sort of put the big, like, turkey for th Thanksgiving. British people do, like, a roast chicken or roast something uh, for uh, Christmas. But in Russia, all mayonnaise-based salads. You're talking, like, five different salads, all mayonnaise. Uh, that, that, that's Russian New Year's for you, so... So Tim actually uh -huh. works at a Russian TV channel. Correct. I used to work on the radio for a long time. I did the, did the morning zoo in Russia. So. so what are the main differences in the working environment in the U.S. and in Russia? Well, I don't know. There are some people who work in some really big corporations here in Moscow. But I would say from my personal experience, everything is so much more relaxed pace. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Obviously, yeah, in America, people get paid more money, even even relative to like costs, because you know there things are more expensive in America, like especially right now construction supplies. Uh, but relative to the cost, Americans do make more money. But the thing is, what you have to do to get that money is just too much. And in Russia, everything can be done tomorrow. Uh, there's an expression where um, about uh, cultures in American or English, like we have, well, what time? You know, when should we do it now? Now is just now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in Russian, it's Sichas, which means this hour. In Kazakh, it's Kazr, which is like today. And isn't it uh, in Spanish, Manana, which is like tomorrow morning or tomorrow or something? So it shows sort of the level of uh, relax. So in Russia, we're at this this hour. So it's not like we're in some sort of like hot weather tropical island where you can just put things off for a month, mm -hmm. but you still have a lot of leeway to maybe be a little bit late or maybe want to redo something. Or there's also a Russian attitude where Russians who do take pride in their work. And this is hilarious. I've actually we used to work at a video game company, right? They yeah. made video games. And the uh, designers would sometimes tell the bosses, I want three more days to do this. And they'd be like, but we need it today. I'm going to take three more days. Like, you know, because they want to do it. They're like, I need three days to do it right, so I'm just going to do it. And you can't argue with them. Mm -hmm. And that's also a very Russian way of doing things of, uh, I know better or I'm just going to do whatever I want. So you so, think that Americans yeah. are much more strict with the deadlines? Well, with rules in general. Do you uh, and that's more punctual as well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in general, I would say about the one thing I say is one of the key things to understanding the mentality, which does affect work a lot, is uh, in America, if something is written on a piece of paper, it may as well be written by God. If there is a rule, Americans obey it. It probably has to do with the fact that uh, we've uh, had the society based on this constitution, rule of law as uh, being sacred. Whereas in Russia, eh. in Russia, we have a saying that rules are created in order to be, in order to break yeah. them. Uh, in Russia, rules are, are just suggestions. Uh, just like someone was telling me in Italy, uh, you know how in, in America they would have something like, you know, you it's like uh, trespassing, forbidden, no entry, you know, yeah. something very strict. And in I Italian, they had some sign that was like uh, strictly forbidden. And the transit was like, it doesn't sound good to say strictly forbidden in English. If it's forbidden, it's forbidden. But in Italy, there's forbidden eh, and strictly yeah, forbidden. Russia, and it's just the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So in Russia, you generally see that most signs that forbid something tend to be very, very rude sounding. Yeah, because even they're, now, <laughs> yeah. when there is this coronavirus and there are signs that you have to wear the mask uh -huh. or that you have to wear the gloves and no yeah. one wears them. <laughs> yeah, so you absolutely must do something or it is absolutely forbidden. Uh, there's also a few different words in Russian for forbidden. There's what, uh, there's um, nilzia, zapreshon, uh, so as you have to do something. There's, a, there's actually a lot of ways to say the same thing, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the, the rulesiness in America, that's one thing where I really prefer Russia, is I'm not a rulesy person. I am the, Ameri I'm the freak of America, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it's probably because I grew up in a black neighborhood where the attitude is very different. Uh, and in some ways, Russian people actually think are a little bit of uh, white America and black America mixed together. Uh, a lot of things from my childhood um, remind me of uh, Russia's today. But one of them is that rules don't matter and no one's going to follow them and no one cares and uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and also I think that Russians, when they see some rule, at first they think whether they should follow it or not and make a decision themselves. Yeah, yeah. If you have listened this far, that means you must like me. So it's R-T-T-T. -T -T. 
R with three T's, Russia Tips, Tricks and Travel. You'll find it very easily on YouTube because my big mug is in the icon. <laughs> on the icon, I should say. But anyways, yeah. What other differences have you noticed how Russians and Americans communicate? Uh, communicate. Uh, <laughs> Russians are definitely very suspicious of people they don't know. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, and that's why one thing, whereas Americans tend to have this, like, you know, especially, I don't know, uh, white Americans, I should say. When they come to Russia, they're like, hey, how are you doing? And everyone's like, yes what what way whoa, whoa whoa like way too much emotion way too much too much you know what i mean and After that's kind of the way i, I am i started in the u.s for one year and i came back to russia i had this habit to say hey how are you doing so i made that in a coffee house yeah i said how are you and he was like so suspicious like why are you asking? Yeah, what do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so uh, there's definitely, Russians are very uh, suspicious or, uh, p p from an American way of looking at things, unfriendly to people they don't know. Uh, generally, but on the other hand, there's certain advantages. Is generally, when you go from the status of being an unknown person to a known person in Russia, uh, your status is immediately increased. And generally, when Russian people know people, uh, they're willing to help them, which is why in Russia, if you have good networking skills, mm -hmm. like I do, well, who knows, maybe they're the best, maybe they're the worst, but they're definitely somewhere in the middle. You can get a lot done, you can achieve a lot. If you're able to leave a positive impression with people, you go from an unknown to being a known guy. And of course, being a foreign person, it's a little bit of a help getting through. There's a little bit of automatic interest towards you. But of course, you have to use that and then make a good impression with people. And then all of a sudden, people are calling you like, hey, you help me with this, help me with that. I'll pay you to do this, I'll pay you to do that. And uh, so networking is, is alive here. You know, in America, we had the these classes are like, well, you need to try to go where the rich people are and try to network with them. In America, it is impossible right. to get a hold of, uh, to really get a hold of people you don't know. That's one thing where it's like cold calling, you know, where you just call someone mm -hmm. you don't know. For some reason, it's the opposite. In America, you cannot. It is impossible. They just will not. Uh, whereas in Russia, I mean, I've just cold called like some really important people and they pick up the phone. And it's unbelievable. It's like, you know, I, I, I don't know what would, what would be the equivalent. Like, I don't know. I'll put it this way. Like in Russia, you can just call Henry Kissinger if that, may, if that means anything to you. The, the Russian equivalent, right? So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Nowadays, a lot of men from Europe and America are in search of a significant other from Russia. Women in Russia are known for paying a lot of attention to their appearance, their traditional views on dating and family. Tim, though, had completely another opinion on this. So, you also had a Russian wife, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go too deep into that, but, uh, you know, I have kids and, uh, uh, well, one of the reasons we wound up being together was because, uh, you know, uh, you meet a lot of these Russian girls and uh, I knew that uh, my only purpose in their lives was to provide a passport, you know. Um, but that's also part of the Russian mentality. Russians are very negative and so Russian women tend to also have a very, very, very negative attitude towards men as being something that's this um, burden they have to bear, cross they have to carry in order to have uh, kids. So generally, I think most Russian women see men as a horrible, horrible, horrible downside that creates children. So. No, I don't know who your wife is, but I think. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about not. I'm talking about all Russian women as a general, uh, general rule. Russian women tend to have a very low view of, especially Russian men. Oh. I think that they view their husbands as support to their children and to their family, I would say. Not yeah, as but they definitely see themselves as superior. Um, I'd really recommend to your viewers to watch a particular YouTube channel. The man is called Kevin Samuels, uh, American guy. He usually focuses a lot of his, um, uh, what he's talking about, about relationships and stuff. He focuses it more on the uh, like black African-American community, but I think a lot of it applies to Russia. And you should uh, see that he even mentioned one thing, he calls it sign language, that uh, uh, women uh, tend, black women in his opinion, tend to use a method of speaking where it's scolding, shaming, S, insults, I, guilt tripping, G, uh, N, needs to be right right and boy <laughs> with my interactions with russian women on a romantic level that sign language that mr samuels describes 
Oh boy, have I uh, gotten a lot of that over the years. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'd really recommend it. Watch Kevin Samuels and you'll kind of see a window into the way a lot of uh, Russian women are. The big difference is that uh, black American women, they have this weird thing where they seem to want to it's almost easier for them to be a mom before getting married. Russian women definitely want to get married and have kids. But again, uh, husband is garbage. He is a source to produce children. That's all he is. I think you just met some wrong women. In no, well, I don't know. Wrong 300 all, women, 400, 500. Like that. Oh, well, when you're into the triple digits with all the girls I've dated here, you know, it's you kind of start to see a pattern. And that's okay. It, it's, main, honest, yeah. it's actually, it's perfectly fine. In fact, that attitude is not really the key problem here. If women were, Russian women were more honest and they did openly say, men are just garbage that has to be tolerated. You know that, uh, you know what, uh, Chut Krasivya Abijan. Who did you date? No. A lot of them. No, no, no. Because remember, I'm a man. I don't, uh, d not everything in my life is based on personal experience, right? So there's this expression in Russia that men have to be just a bit prettier than a monkey. That's what it goes back to of they just sort of have to provide this minimum function in order to get the kids because the child is gold. There's also the Russian expression, um, the only man I'll ever love is my son. I'm sure you've probably heard that one before. Yeah, 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 yeah. See no, what this I, one I yeah. haven't heard about. Actually, this is the first time for me to hear this kind of opinion because usually, uh, what at least I get on my YouTube channel yeah. from American men, they say that they don't like American women because they only think about career and they would like to have a more um, mm. A woman with a more traditional view, like a Russian woman, yeah. uh, who would look after kids, who wouldn't think only about work, and yeah, I got comments like well, that. Well, what you're talking about is something completely different, and it's not, it's not really connected to what I said. What I said is that uh, men, uh, the view that, especially uh, with foreigners, because they always praise Russian women as being this amazing thing, well, there's this uh, factor, again, going back to uh, the genius himself, the godfather, Kevin Samuels, one of the best YouTube channels there is, um, he gets into the fact that women are really attracted to and really only respect men they consider to be a little bit better than themselves, a little bit superior, that they're sort of this, this man is a step up from them. And when Russian women are so praised as being the most beautiful in the world and the most great, you know, with the most grace and the most this and the most that, Russian women tend to see themselves up here and so they look down on men and they're very unsatisfied with men from that position. So in a lot of ways, if you put uh, especially women on a pedestal, you essentially really destroy the opportunity to have a good relationship with her. And that's what kind of what happens in Russia. Because the average Russian woman, I guarantee you, sees herself as way, way more valuable, way superior to the average Russian man. You see what I mean? That's, uh, I don't know, I think that that's pretty universal here. So you uh, yeah. said that uh, with Russians, Americans should be less emotional. What other things should Americans never do with Russians? Oh, uh, unless you completely agree with the mainstream view that Russians have of World War II, just don't talk about World War II. Or just try to dodge the topic or just be like, yeah, yeah, go Soviet Union. Just don't talk about it. People are very, very sensitive about World War II. Talk about... Oh, well, and also one thing, the pe Russian people are very big on the whole uh, take off your shoes when you go inside their house. That's huge. Uh, in fact, I do know an American, well, I barely knew him, but we went to this club when I was much younger. And an American guy put his, uh, he sort of put his foot on a chair. Well, here's, well, this is the chair. So he put his foot on the chair to tie his shoe. And in Russia, that's a no-no. Even if people of come course. over, yeah, no, not of course. <laughs> it is not of course. Uh, because in America you can. So in Russia, uh, even when people come to like fix your, I don't know, your, 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 your light fixture breaks and the guy comes to fix it, he takes off his shoes and goes onto your chair in socks in order to change that light fixture, okay? That's a huge, massive culture install. That guy got knocked unconscious for that, yeah, just for, immediately. For me, that's a normal yeah. thing that he would have to take off his shoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that in the US people, um, go inside their houses in shoes and that's a shock for Russians yeah. actually. And we have these stereotypes that uh, Americans can lie in their bed in yeah. shoes. Yeah, and it's it's true. Whereas in Russia that is, that is uh, I don't know. That's, but it's disgusting. Well, uh, in America it's not. In Russia that's basically like lying in a pigsty. It's the same equivalent. You would, you would never do that. And like I said, when I lived in Kazakhstan, uh, I had to get used to the old woman yelling at me because when you come home in Russia, you should also completely change your clothing. Wait, but you see in what the I mean? U.S., do you also walk barefoot in your house? If you want to. My so yeah. you walk both 
in shoes and barefoot, but it's disgusting. Yeah, it is, but we do it. So uh, the, I would say what the most. What if mo you went to a public toilet and then you walk there barefoot? Uh, uh, well, I would say that the, the the most disgusting thing we do in America is carpet in hospitals. Uh, maybe that's changing, but when I was young, I mean, you'd have dentist office hospitals carpet because it's very hard to really clean carpet you know there's mm. blood and puke and whatever else from this hospital or at least you know people's skin and all this and it's all in that carpet and you can try to clean carpet but you never really get it as clean as like uh like a i don't know a concrete floor or a linoleum floor where you could just chemical the hell out of it so i would say that's really now that i've come here to russia and you see that in a hospital you will never ever see a carpet anywhere you start to realize oh wait that's a that was a terrible terrible idea deaf carpet at a hospital you know <laughs> yeah. so yeah so I definitely uh, Russians are actually uh, despite the fact that Russia gets this reputation being sort of brutal and all this stuff uh, Russians are actually very very into the whole cleanliness thing and even Russian people who live in the or other ethnicities who live in the most dank forgotten village do their absolute best to make things as clean as possible so cleanliness is a uh, and hygiene are uh, big things here exactly so. if some person didn't take off his shoes <laughs> yeah the, um, uh, host would be so um, offended offended mm -hmm. because probably she washed the floor and everything yeah. and she would be like why would you do that yeah, yeah, yeah. to me <laughs> and there's a few other little things like if you go to visit someone you should always bring a present even if it's just like candy candy is a good option uh, just a box of candy in fact it, like every store in Russia they have boxed like uh, candy specifically for that reason because it's, it's just the most generic thing to buy because sometimes people bring alcohol as a gift but not everyone drinks alcohol you know yeah, you could bring like call it yeah bring something for tea yeah candy, exactly chocolate. So uh, yeah, something very small, but yeah. when you are a guest, it's just so nice. Because maybe my memory is wrong, but I don't really remember in America seeing like boxed candy that's in this like pretty box with like pictures on it of romantic scenes in order to, you know what I mean, to specifically bring as a present. Uh, I know that exists in America, but I don't remember it being this like mainstream thing where it's in every store, you know, like it is here. But I don't know if it's true or not, but I've seen uh, in many American movies that usually if there are some new people in the neighborhood yeah then other people would always come with a pie to say hi to them well, i don't know about a pie but there's a yeah sometimes if there's a neighborhood where there's like some sort of like gated community where it's like sort of ball boxed off there might be like a welcoming committee where people will go and visit them so but, but i'm from a poor neighborhood no one gives a shit about us <laughs> you know what i mean no one's gonna do something nice for us uh that's you know, what i always I'm from... see in the american movies and i was like whoa that's a nice tradition yeah i'm sure uh, i'll put this way i'm sure where rich white people are that's the way it is but uh, uh in my uh, neighborhood no then no, that, that was uh, not an option we did do the whole halloween candy thing that we did mm. do you know where you uh, you know give the little kids uh, candy and stuff. So that that we did do about uh, giving your neighbors stuff. But overall, uh, where I'm from, you don't talk to your neighbors. You keep your mind on your own uh, business. Keep your door locked and uh, keep your gun at the ready. So you know that's kind of the way things are there. Okay, so you've traveled a lot in Russia. Yeah. What do you think are Russia's biggest problems? Well, Maybe get, yeah. poor villages. Maybe uh, it all, like I said, everything goes back to the inferiority complex and the overwhelming hopelessness in Russian society. Uh, the sort of then, which which is really the core of things, but it's also a sort of lack of ideology, a lack of reason. Like, why are we doing anything? There is no. Uh, it's very important for people to have an answer as to why. The great philosophical question: Why? In Russia, there's never an answer to that. Why are we doing this? What's the point? No point is expressed, and uh, that's part of the problem. So we sort of are on a uh, big ship with no with no one at the uh, helm. You know, there's a, it's an airplane without a pilot. Uh, and uh, that's probably the overall real problem here. Uh, what, yeah. But what impressed you the most when you traveled? And what did you like about traveling in Russia? Well, impressed, it's the big open spaces. I like my big spaces. And I mean, it's, uh, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. Well, it's 10 times bigger in Russia. A lot of uh, amazing views. And uh, uh, the thing that I would say that is maybe the most surprising is just how many, uh, how, how many new buildings are being built everywhere and how you'll go to these weird semi-abandoned villages and there'll be a brand new house in them uh, so this uh, view from moscow remember the moscow stereotype because there's millions of people here and moscow really is the epicenter of the russian media so the uh, way that russians 
present Russia to Russians, to the world, is usually through this Moscow filter, which is part of the problem. But they say, uh, the, what, how does Moscow view Russia? The Chinese are taking over Vladivostok, all the villages are dying, like you said, all this, that, that. And you go around the country, there's no, there's, there's no Chinese people in Vladivostok, there's no... Uh, yeah, a lot of the villages have sort of died out that were tiny, but that's kind of part of capitalism. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see new buildings being built everywhere, even in places like even uh, Tiva is uh, the, the poorest oblast in Russia, and there are still building complexes being built and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, it's, just, it's just a shame. But what can you do? Uh, the, who, you know, who really works in um, the media in, in Moscow? Who's really the person writing the articles? They're 20 to 35 year old, single, liberal, women and uh that's that's who's really presenting the way the world works and uh in russia and unfortunately they have this very fearful pessimistic view of the rest of russia when uh, yes. things aren't so bad things really really aren't so bad and as you said russians don't know russia well so they no. don't travel here that much no. they don't see the country at all and they don't prefer to travel in russia but when you start to travel you are amazed at how many beautiful places you can see in Russia and that you can travel a lot here and find so many cool places, mountains, the sea and architecture and everything. Yeah, yeah. And what do you like the most about living in Russia? <laughs> well, this is sort of going to sound weird, but I think my life has a lot more meaning. Um, especially because like, you know, I'm a scumbag from the city streets. I'm a, I'm a piece of shit from the ghetto. That's who, that's what I was born to be, right? And uh, here uh, I've essentially sort of risen through the ranks where I actually write and produce material for think tanks. I'm actually one of the more uh, sort of influential people in terms of um, media analysis in Russia. Basically, I went from the absolute bottom of the barrel of American society to being like a mini Henry Kissinger here. I'll take that. I'll take that any day of the week. Nice. Thank you guys for watching till the end. In the comments write how do you imagine Russia, how it is represented in your country, what kind of image of Russia do you have in your mind, and what would you add to Tim's answers? Yeah. Tim, thank you so much for... And thank you so just... much. Bye guys. <laughs>